famous P-51 Mustang was considered the best piston engine fighter of World War II, but it had one flaw. It couldn't fly over 2,000 miles. The distance needed to be covered to serve as an escort for some of the longest missions over the Pacific. To solve this issue, designers from the North American Aviation Company would use the Mustang to design a brand new long-range escort fighter with a unique feature. This new aircraft would mate two P-51 fuselages with a common center wing. The F-82, better known as the Twin Mustang, was produced too late to enter combat during World War II. However, it became a star at the beginning of the Korean War, after winning the conflict's first air-to-air -air victory. The success of the F-82 was short-lived, doomed from the beginning to operate as a short-term stopgap aircraft. Other jet-powered fighters quickly replaced it as a bomber escort, but the Twin Mustang remains an icon thanks to an innovative design and for exceeding all expectations during the Korean War. The P-51 is considered an icon of World War II aviation. The aircraft was initially designed in 1940 by the company North American Aviation for the British Royal Air Force. The Mustang, as the British dubbed it, was later adopted by the U.S. Army Air Forces. The aircraft had a maximum speed of 390 miles per hour and a combat range of 750 miles with two drop tanks. The low drag wing and engine cooling system of the Mustang made it exceptionally fast and with an unrivaled range. However, the plane lacked a high-altitude supercharger, which limited its low-altitude operations to 15,000 feet. The P-51 had its inaugural flight on October 26, 1940, after an uncommonly short development period. It entered the Royal Air Force in April of 1942 as a bomber escort, propelled by a reliable Allison engine and a larger-than-average internal space for fuel load. But because it didn't perform well at a high altitude, the Mustang was initially used only for reconnaissance missions. Meanwhile, the U.S. Air Force had an increasing need for a capable bomber escort. With the help of external fuel tanks, the Mustang could fly for almost five hours from England to Germany and back. At first, the P-51s only served as close escorts to Allied bombers on their way back home. They soon demonstrated their superiority in a more expanded role. The Mustangs were eventually sent ahead of the bomber groups to intercept the Luftwaffe in a preemptive fighter sweep. To keep the P-51s away, the Germans countered by sending their FW-190 bomber destroyers, which were easily outperformed by the Mustangs, with two additional Messerschmitt Bf-109 escorts. The Bf-109 proved a better match against the Mustang, but the German strategy was generally unsuccessful, as it was complicated to assemble. By late 1944, the Mustang flew in all but one of the U.S. fighter groups. Upgraded with new gyro gun sights, the aircraft proved extremely effective against all German opponents. With round-the-clock bombardments and a significant decrease in U.S. bombers lost, the P-51 penetrated deeper into the German airspace than any other fighter. Hermann Göring, Air Marshal of the Reich, reportedly said of the plane, quote, When I saw Mustangs over Berlin, I knew the jig was up. Later in 1945, the Mustang served the Chinese Nationalist Air Force on its missions against Japan. After World War II, the aircraft became the standard piston engine fighter of the U.S. Air Force. The P-51 fought in the Korean War and with the Air Force Reserve through most of the 1950s, until it was finally retired in 1957. Despite its success, the P-51's maximum extended range of 1,615 miles with additional auxiliary fuel tanks wasn't enough for escorting the Boeing B-29 Superfortress in missions of over 2,000 miles. This was a particular requirement for Operation Downfall, in which the U.S. planned the invasion of the Japanese home islands. Neither the Mustang nor the Lockheed P-38 Lightning could complete missions from the Solomon Islands or the Philippines to Tokyo. In 1943, North American aircraft started working on a fighter that could complete the desired distance without refueling. Design Chief Edgar Schmud decided to incorporate two P-51 fuselages with a common center wing and an additional fuselage plug behind the cockpit. The prototype had a horizontal stabilizer and a removable centerline gun pod. The aircraft was twice as heavy as a P-51, with six .5 caliber machine guns in the center wing. The plane could also carry 25 air-to-ground rockets. 
the aircraft could accommodate a two-man crew in two fully equipped cockpits. Later on, the right cockpits were modified to accommodate the radar operator. Early versions of the plane were also powered by British Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, which were later replaced for US-made Allison engines. The new P-82 could fly over 2,300 miles at 475 miles per hour and had a combat range of over 1,600 miles. The twin Mustang also had an operational ceiling of 40,000 feet, which allowed it to stay close to the bombers. On February 27, 1947, a modified P-82 nicknamed Betty Joe set a record after flying over 5,000 miles between Hawaii and New York without refueling. It was the longest non-stop flight ever completed by a propeller-driven fighter. According to author Alan Carey, flying the double aircraft could be disorienting to pilots who, quote, felt a psychological discomfort of the impending doom of a mid-air collision when they caught sight of the co-pilot slash radar operator's fuselage out of the corner of their eyes. North American Aviation still produced 250 twin Mustangs for the U.S. Air Force. The P-82 was extremely versatile. It could serve as a fighter, an interceptor, an attack bomber, an escort, and a reconnaissance aircraft. But its original mission was eliminated after the atomic bombing of Japan at the end of World War II. It had been designed too late to enter combat. In 1947, however, P-82 was given a second chance thanks to the Soviet Aviation Day Parade. U.S. military planners were surprised by the Tupolev Tu-4, a piston-engine Soviet bomber that had been reverse-engineered from the B-29 Superfortress. As the tensions rose because of the Berlin airlift, one of the Cold War's major crises, the Tupolev represented the threat of a Soviet nuclear attack from the air. The U.S. Air Force needed fighter jets that could withstand long-range missions through any weather. But at the time, all-weather fighter jets were delayed in the development process. For example, the P-89 Scorpion had several issues and wouldn't enter the production phase until 1952. The XF-87 Blackhawk project was delayed and eventually abandoned in 1948. The twin Mustang had to fill in the gap as the only fighter that could intercept the Tupolev. On June 11, 1948, the Air Force changed the category of the plane. Instead of keeping it as a P-82 for pursuit, it turned to F-82 for fighter. The aircraft entered service with the 325th Fighter Group of the Air Defense Command. The squadrons were waited at the McCord Field Air Base in Washington, in case the U.S. needed to send them in a mission to escort long-range bomber strikes against the Soviet Union. While waiting for the Soviet threat, the twin Mustang eventually got its chance to enter combat during the Korean War. On June 27, 1950, F-82s stationed in Japan were the first to report to the invasion of South Korea by North Korean forces. The air crews flew out for a reconnaissance mission over the 38th parallel, which divided the two Koreas. The information provided by the F-82s confirmed the invasion. This is considered the first air combat mission of the U.S. for the Korean War. The next day, a formation of twin Mustangs provided cover for C-47 and C-54 transports, which were tasked with evacuating American citizens who were in the direct path of the invasion. As they flew out of Seoul's Kimpo airfield, five Soviet-built aircraft showed up and engaged in a fight with the F-82s. Three of the North Korean warplanes were destroyed, and the twin Mustangs won the first air-to-air -air victory of the conflict. The F-82s exceeded all expectations during the Korean War. Tasked with providing ground support against North Korean activity between the front lines and the 38th parallel, the F-82 squadron flew 35 combat sorties in a five-day period. Its biggest win was on July 10, 1950, when a squadron destroyed a bridge at Pyeongtaek and annihilated enemy ground troops, including seven personnel carriers, over 30 tanks, and 117 trucks. The F-82 was extremely effective at hitting ground targets, but many of them took damage in the raids. The lack of spare parts for the aircraft soon became a problem for the U.S. Air Force. The aircraft production had ended in 1947 because it hadn't been expected to stay in combat service for a very long time. Therefore, there wasn't an adequate supply of spare parts or enough F-82s to replace those lost in combat. The U.S. Air Force calculated that the twin Mustangs available 
could provide ground support for a maximum of 60 days. By October of 1950, new aircraft such as the F-51, F-80, and F-84 took over combat ground missions, and the introduction of the MiG-15 also pressed air-to-air -air combat into the jet age. Through late 1950 and 1951, the twin Mustangs were relegated to weather and reconnaissance missions. By then, the Chinese Communist forces had gotten involved in the war. The intervention of the twin Mustang was still fundamental in monitoring enemy activity. Despite its excellent service during the Korean War, the use of F-82s became increasingly limited due to the new dominance of jet fighters. By August 1951, the last eight twin Mustangs that were still part of the squadron were replaced by the Lockheed F-94 Starfire. In 1952, the twin Mustang was modified to an H-model designation and assigned to fly in cold weather as air defense for the Alaskan Air Command. There, the F-82s patrolled over areas where Soviet air defense tests took place. At the time, it was feared that Alaska could be a backdoor for an attack on the United States. Another small number of modified F-82s remained in Korea after serving as parts and replacement aircraft. The rest were sent to a reclamation storage depot, thus ending its five-year operational life. Today, the unique aircraft can be seen at the Wright-Patterson Museum in Dayton, Ohio, and the U.S. Air Force History and Traditions Museum in San Antonio, Texas. Currently, only one twin Mustang is still in flying condition. Test pilot Ray Fowler flew the aircraft unintentionally on New Year's Eve 2018 in Douglas, Georgia. Although he only intended to put some air underneath the wings to test the stick, the aircraft accelerated faster than expected. Once again, it flew defying all expectations.